Hello, it's Maxine. <clears throat> Today I'm doing a video that um, I wasn't exactly planning on doing, but something I wanted to talk about for a really long time. This, like the videos I was aiming to do lately was more so like to help people with mental health, um, such as a uh, to give more examples of a five-week outpatient program I participated in before that um, I still have the booklet, a large booklet of that I feel like could share a lot of useful tips to help people um, because sometimes, you know, things that seem like common sense isn't so common and we need a lot more examples and we need to be able to like discuss it with one another to like really get the tools to help ourselves because before th th like that five week program I did not have <laughs> I mean I had just gone through life into my late 20s just barely getting by and still having suicidal ideations and stuff so um and I can happily say that since having that therapy, I haven't thought about it once. Like I have, um, well, there could be a number of factors for that, for not feeling that way anymore. But um, I attribute a lot of it to that five week program. And I wish that it was sort of like a class that kids take in school and it's like mandatory because it talks about everything from just like self-esteem, anger, um, setting goals, um, emotional regulation, like um, meditation, just a whole bunch of things that help people. But to get onto the subject that I have been putting off that is really important, um, I want to talk today about... Um, child SA and like the signs what we can do to prevent um hopefully prevent well it'd be nice to prevent all of it but I, obviously that's never gonna happen it's like a very <sighs> deep-rooted issue that's like hidden and covered and it's um it's like the you know, like some of the most influential, like powerful people in the world are behind some of that. Um, but what I'm here to try to do is to just spread a little bit of awareness about what it could be like to experience that in the home, out of the home. Just, I haven't done a lot of research. I didn't read anything. I just wanted to speak solely from my experience and what, things I've witnessed, things I've experienced and witnessed. And the only thing I did look up is the statistics is that one in 10 children prior to age 15 will experience sexual assault. And women are three times more likely and this is, I believe, with Stats Canada 2022. I couldn't, um, I didn't, I kind of just pulled up the first fact on Google. Um, but I know that, um, this, this statistic sounds about right because I've heard a lot. I thought it was more like one in five, one in eight type of thing but um the statistic also increases if you go up from age 15 to 18 um women between age of like I think it was 15 to 19 are most likely to experience their abuse during that time <sighs> <clears throat> I tried to pick a location that was like extremely quiet and not full of people because it's like a very serious subject and but I might have to pause from time to time. So 
in my experience, um, our parents were just extreme, like my parents and parents of people I know who have experienced it were just way too trusting, you know, back then or whatever, like maybe just, it's not even back then. It's like completely situational. Like some parents have a bit, like have a bit more common sense and they are very protective and I know you can be on the other hand too protective where you're like a helicopter parent but in my eyes I mean I mean depending if it's not abuse and it's more protective then I'd much rather have that than a parent that's just so casual and so trusting of, of everyone and kids might see it differently like they think that being too strict is unbearable but believe me when you've witness what I've witnessed and just being so vulnerable and being in situations where you can really be taken advantage of you're gonna give thanks to your parents for being really just really overprotective um because you know most of the time it's people you know that are actually abusing the children. It's not just, it's not usually strangers. The statistics say, the statistics say that it's people you know that are out there to harm your children. So it's people you trust, people that you don't suspect. And if you did suspect them, then it wouldn't be an ongoing issue it's an issue because people are too trusting and they're not recognizing the warning signs or they're um you know there could be it, there could be a lot more to that like people fearing their lives like being threatened well if you tell anyone then I'm going to you know take your life or threaten those around you um and you could be trapped in marriages. You could be living in rural c communities. You might not have a lot of family. Like you might literally feel trapped, but I hope that, um, I hope my message can, if it reaches the audience it's intended for, I hope it can help influence at least one person to get themselves out of a situation where a child is being harmed. So, <clears throat> things I witnessed as a child, and before I say that, I just want to say that I, um, I did make another video a long time ago called Things Women and Girls Experience, and I know that things can happen to boys too, of course, but I was just speaking solely from my experience as a child, as a girl, as a woman, and maybe hopefully more men and boys will be able to speak out someday and create their own type of video of what they've experienced because I think it could be quite a lot alike but it could be there could be other indications that I'm not able to um relate to or like but um so things I've witnessed that were extremely inappropriate that did lead to someone I know who was abused um gift giving so constantly you know trying to spend one-on-one -on -one time um gift giving compliments kind of like treating the person the child like an adult treating the child like they were in a relationship with that person so going to movies and dinners and buying them clothes and sometimes the clothes were like extremely inappropriate and and you know compliments about them their body um bragging about wealth so bragging about money to try to lure the child to think like either oh how cool they are or you know if I kind of do what they say they're gonna you know get me everything I want or they may make those promises and you know just 
mainly like if they're really going out of their way to try to spend one-on-one -on -one time with the child um and you know you don't want to go into life like not trusting your family and friends but you have to be cautious you can't just like oh they're just spending one-on-one -on -one time with their aunt or uncle or a friend or maybe they don't have a father figure in their life so you have other people to kind of come and try to mentor them you just have to be really careful and you have to be able to like have a conversation with your child about warning signs and and you know another example is we there were these new this new family um moved in on the block and it was me and my two me and my sibling and then there was one other sibling at their house or one child at their house but then there was an older cousin who would hang out and the very like one of the very first times if not the very first day or the second time we went to visit we were in the boy's bedroom and the door was shut and one of them pulled out like a very extreme pornography magazine not just um you know naked bodies but actual like sexual acts and I mean I was just kind of stunned and I was just like I'm sure like a lot of kids I was kind of like not curious in like a sexual way but just kind of like you know I didn't immediately run and go ask for help I mean maybe I wanted to I don't exactly remember all the details because it was so long ago like I could have wanted to get out of the room but for all I know the older guy was standing against the door I just don't remember all those details but I know that we got caught with it and you would think that after an experience like that like very first time going to a home and that being what you're exposed to you think that would be the end of the relationship but no my parents just continue to let us hang out with these kids and I would like constantly say to my mom how I was like really uncomfortable and didn't want like I could see some of these signs happening and I was very reserved and not close to the kids but my younger sibling was like very naive and because they were younger and they were being influenced and there were things that I was witnessing and I was trying to express how I was just really uncomfortable and I just felt like something bad was going to happen and then when one weekend for some reason I went to my grandma's by myself and maybe because I was acting up because of the situation that I was experiencing, but I went to my grandma's to have one-on-one -on -one time. And that was the week that I went to my grandma's. Um, something did happen and I'm not gonna say who, to who or whatever, but um, someone was assaulted and and what was really sad about that is, I mean, I was already experiencing childhood abuse, um, alcoholism and neglect and things. Um, when I came back that weekend, I was sat down and I was interrogated like that I was hiding something like, did this happen to you? And they were so aggressive and so horrible towards me that I had to like cry and say that nothing had happened to me. But I said, I was telling you that something like this was going to happen like in so many words I don't know how I phrased it but I was like for the first time I was able to recognize that this is not my fault like you guys are the ones I was trying to tell you something was going to happen <sighs> and I know that's really horrible like maybe you can gather who I'm speaking about I, maybe I have no right speaking on the what happened to this person but if we don't talk about these things how will things ever change and um I'm sorry I just I'm not a liar I don't want to create oh it was some other person it was mm. 
like I don't know how I would feel if somebody was on the internet like talking about something that had happened to me but um I think at this age I would feel like well hopefully it can help in some way and not harm so other things um sleepovers I think that sh sleepovers should be a lot more um like sleepovers either shouldn't happen at all or if there's older siblings in the home at the same time or um I don't know you just have to use your own judgment I hope that my parents would just pretty much just hand me off to anyone like they my mom constantly had things to do in her social life my dad did not care for us at all and on the weeks sometimes holidays my mom would take on her own um we'd be left with him just barely taking care of us and um but quite often my mom would have plans and she'd like leave us with essentially strangers like before seeing the situation in the home like I'm just very lucky that nothing else had happened to me <sighs> anyway um you know comments about development like saying oh you're getting boobs and stuff like in amongst families like you might think that's just funny or that's just what people say I think it's extremely inappropriate, like talking about children's development should never be discussed like in a joking way, like that's not something you would say about a boy and his balls dropping because it's not something you could see on the outside and like wearing clothes and stuff and so like for people to think that it's okay for men to or whoever to speak about that um you know i think one thing we need to get over completely as a society is talking so highly about looks like when you're constantly saying how attractive how beautiful a child is like i just find that extremely disturbing um you know, saying how they're a knockout or they're going to make the boys crazy or asking constantly if they have a boyfriend or girlfriend at a really young age. Like, things like that really need to stop. Like, it's inappropriate. It's, um, it's kind of a clear indication that something's not right there. Because in my mind, I would never think like in, when I had my daycare and I had my kids, I would say like, oh, they're so cute. They're so adorable or whatever. But it was never like picking and choosing which ones are more um, attractive by society standards or something like that's something that needs to end. Like people commenting and people exploiting their children on the Internet for likes and views and then people commenting about how beautiful they are like I just think it's really disturbing like how handsome they are and oh how they're gonna make such great looking kids someday and things to that effect like it's just really inappropriate we need to stop putting looks on such like we need to stop making looks so important and it needs to be about who the child is, like how about treating one another better or um, ending bullying or their other strengths, like their hobbies, their interests, like what makes them a good person, not constantly talking about. It always comes back to, in my mind, like that, um, that guy's mug shot was so attract he was so attractive that he got like he became a model or something because because it like became it became something about his mug shot like just grew in popularity and he became a model it's like who cares about why he was in jail or what the reason was 
he's good looking. He deserves to be a model. It's like, that's the way of the world right now. It's like, looks are far above who a person is at their core. So even criminals are treated better than people who are ugly. So, so that was mostly what I witnessed. I'm sure there's tons of things I'm forgetting, but um, like I said, I did make another video and I'll put the link in the description in the comments if you would like to um, hear more about my other experiences, like first-hand experience. So things I experienced as a child, and a little backstory is that um, I always knew something was very wrong. And, like, I always knew something was wrong. But once I got to a certain age, I had learned, I had always been told at a young age, like, how my dad had had it worse than me. He constantly put that in my face. He made me feel like everything I was experiencing wasn't as significant as what he was experiencing. To try to justify his actions and to not take accountability and to not get help. And to continue the cycle of abuse. So, but there were clear indications of sexual abuse, sexual harassment that I experienced as a young kid that I wasn't able to piece together until I was an adult because I, because I just... I just was so brainwashed and I I really thought in my mind like well that's what he experienced as a kid there's no way that he would be looking at me and feeling any sort of way I just kind of I really I don't know like there are, like when I read this list out you'll be like how on earth did you not go and reach for help but it's like I was expressing there are like very clear indications in every area of my life that I was like very much suffering from child abuse and neglect and no one was helping no family member no one intervened so when it comes to this stuff it was just another thing on the list that was just not gonna be so things I experienced daily were sexual jokes and constantly the same sexual jokes over and over and over. And I don't want to um, repeat any of them because I haven't, because, because there's just so many and I've like tried to push it out of my mind for so many years. Like I'm 35 years old now. I moved out at 18, came back for a little bit officially at 19 then I didn't move back in with my mom till I was like in my late 20s when my abuser died, main abuser. So there are jokes that I could say, but, um, you know, if I only come up with a few examples off the top of my head, then it's just going to not seem as significant as it really was because it's like these were just techniques where in their mind, either they thought they were just being funny and they're completely unaware about how inappropriate they were being or it was like all these little techniques to groom to try to normalize sex and make it seem like not such a big deal they made it seem like it wasn't something to that was important that should be like between partners that love each other and care about each other they just all these things that i'm going to mention made me believe when I you know it, I believe in sexual liberation I be, feel like people should be able to do what they want as adults but I think that a lot of us probably who didn't take it as seriously and had have had a lot of partners and things like that possibly part of it could be just for the experience but the other part of it is if we experience these types of things at a young age then we don't think of sex as being this important thing which it is very important if you're not even if you're um you know even if you're safe and doing the best that you 
can to be safe. You can still have unwanted pregnancies. You can still get STIs and everything. So we, anyway, um, next is, you know, my dad was one of those people who wanted to, and I'm just calling him dad because I just don't feel uncomfortable saying his name. And I don't want to call him a sperm donor or like make up a name or I should just be calling him by his name because he was anything but a father. He was just there in the household. He never taught me anything except how to hate myself. And <sighs> anyway, um, R rated movies all the time. So it was always about what he wanted to do and calling all the shots, but he would put on adult inappropriate movies all the time and there would always be some sort of sex scene in it like very graphic you know those like 80s 90s movies um there was always comments about my body and There was a time where he was drunk and you can use it as an excuse or an accident or whatever, but pro I think it happened more than once that he was drunk and crawled into my bed and I had to call for help and my mom came and, and, you know, she didn't even come back to see if I was okay after or anything. I just like went to bed like traumatized and I don't, I was too young to know if anything really had happened, but, um, he could have just crawled into bed accidentally, but the weight of him and the, I remember everything, like the, the odor and the weight and his breath and everything. And I don't know if he was assaulting me. I was just too young. That's why I think a lot more of us are assaulted and we don't even know until much later. But, um, when I was older, there were comments such, there was a time where he was at his kitchen tape at the dining table and he had his head he was like, he said, you know, you're more attractive than this. And he named some sort of porn star. And he told me that it was a porn star. And I didn't know. I didn't like hardly know what porn was. I didn't. In my mind, when he said, you're more beautiful than this porn star, I thought he was just calling me beautiful for the first time in my life. He never complimented me. I never, I didn't for a second think it was about my body or anything like that <sighs> and with that comment um that was probably after the age of where I found out what had happened to him as a child and so I in my mind I really thought there's no possible way like what had happened to him is something he would be thinking about me so that's why at the time, I think I even remember telling some of my friends, oh, my dad said this about me. And then immediately they could tell like how wrong that was. But in my head, I just was trying to justify it saying, oh, he was just saying I'm as beautiful as this person. But re in reality, he's like talking about me and my body. And even at the time when he said this comment, he said, you don't even realize how wrong that was. And he like either cried or pretended to cry and he put his head down on the table. So that was like the very first, from what I can remember, like very first confession of how he was feeling about me. And, um, you know, like, I also, um, I was threatened all the time, threatened violence, threatened even, like, to kill me, but in a way where I didn't quite understand at the time that I do now, like, saying to hit him so that he could claim self-defense. At the time in my head, I thought he meant that if I hit him, and he hit me back then and the police came or something, it would be fine. But what he was saying is he wanted me to hit him so he could somehow justify killing me. 
and um, when I was young, either due to the nutrition or something that had happened to me, I started to develop um, develop like severe constipation and I had hemorrhoids and I have an anal fissure. And if you know what an anal fissure is, it's sometimes comparable to childbirth. That's how painful it is. And so there's this one incident that really stands out in my head. And I remember not being able to sit down for a week. Like, you know, that saying people would say like they were spanked so hard they couldn't sit down for a week. Well, that happened to me, but literally I had trouble sitting. I remember going to gym class that day and standing up because I couldn't bear to sit on the floor. But part of me doesn't know if something more happened because around the same time I developed this problem with bowel movements and he made me use his own hemorrhoid cream before even taking me to a doctor to get help. So that's kind of a sign of what may have happened. So that's like something really hard to talk about, but um, I think it is important. All of it's important as fucking horrific, it, horrible as it is, and it does happen to kids. Ugh. So I've also, with age, I, um, I like have developed like these other kind of like flashbacks that came back. I don't know, develops not the right word, but these flashbacks have come back and I'm like quite certain that there are things that happened when I wasn't an adult and just being like blackout drunk. Like there's things that have come back from my childhood, but there's certain actions that be possibly due to my age. I just don't know who the person that was doing it was. I've tried to not think too much more about it, but in this whole list of things I experienced, I think you can gather that there's a possibility of other acts. And um, there was something you would say a lot when I was older is that I never, you know, I was maybe mean, but I never hurt you like beyond spanking or something. But um, I think he would constantly say that in a way where it was like he was trying to see if I remembered. Like you would say, I never, like, you know, that happened to me, but I never did that to you. And like this pause. And I think he was trying to see if I remembered if anything happened. Because I think that things happened when I was a lot younger. Um, you know, not only do I have a problem with eye contact and have a hard time even just looking at the screen when I'm making my videos, but I feel like really sad, really ashamed, and it's just taking everything in me not to cry. So the last final thing in my experience, well, things I can remember off the top of my head, because this is something that I wrote today, but um, there's people directly in front of me, so I have to wait a second. <clears throat> One of the reasons I'm making this video is not only to try to help others, not only to speak from my first-hand experience, but um, part of me probably hopes that this reaches the right people in my own life who have denied me my experience, who have tried to justify actions, who have just tried to not understand. And I want them to fucking understand that this was what I was experiencing every single day. And I'm lucky to be here today because all of this stuff, Yes, it could be worse. It could always be worse. But all of this stuff had an impact on me and how I am today. And in some ways, made me a better person. And in many more ways, it made me not a great person. It makes me not trust people. It's made me pretty much never have experience like love. Like I've been in relationships, but I've never been loved. I've never, I didn't feel loved by my mom or my dad. And then hardly any family and... It's just 
really awful. But the last thing I wanted to say, because people won't, don't understand, people aren't trying to understand some of my own family members, um, if you can even call them that. And some people try to deny the experience or try to say, well, oh, he was just a child, like as a, he was a, it's like he wasn't a man, he was a child or something. Just anything to justify his actions and to deny me my experience. Well, this last one is that um, he was, <sighs> this last one is that um, he was, um, stimulating himself on the couch on the couch while I was on the love seat like he was doing it in a way where it's like he didn't think I would notice or something but like this is while I'm like watching tv he slept on the couch and never slept in my mom's bed beyond a certain point because he was also a cheater and he would sneak out in the night and he was an at a gambler an alcoholic maybe when my mom realized I don't know whose decision it was, it's none of my business, but at some point he would sleep on the couch and his schedule was also opposite to everyone working nights, mostly. But there was a time where he's sleeping on the couch and I like noticed the actions that he was doing under the covers and I kind of just, still in my head, so brainwashed, I thought there's no possible way he's doing that while I'm sitting right here. So I kind of ignored it a few times, but then there were it happened many more many more times where I said something and then he said I'm not blah 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 but I knew that's what was happening and I went upstairs and I just tried to forget about it or I started watching tv in my room more to like stay away from him but it was a thousand percent that's what was happening and something that just came to mind that I didn't write down is that we only had one bathroom and, um, like, every time I'm freaking starting up the bath water, we only had a bath, not a shower, and we had no lock on the bathroom door, he would go in to ch use the bathroom. And with age, more and more and more, I'd, like, try to hide my body under the water and he would like go to wash his hands and he'd be looking at the mirror down at me. Like, that's the kind of effed up shit I had to live with. And it was like any chance he could to take away my innocence to just treat me like I was nothing, just a body to look at. it's embarrassing it's humiliating it's disgusting it makes me hate myself but um that's not my fault and I need to speak up and try to help others somehow I'm not doing this for pity and for like for people to feel so sorry for me it's like to just like explain the depth of everything I don't care what people think about like I don't care like if people will believe me or not I don't care if people will try to understand I don't care if even if people do feel sorry for trying to like I don't care if people feel sorry for trying to deny me my experience before it's too late for that now it's like I'm just solely bringing this up to try to like spread awareness and to help people and it's hopefully helping me because like this is gonna be really hard to share and my video might not even be like allowed on YouTube who knows so my last page why my dad hated me so much. Now I can clearly see it when you look back on all the things. He was ashamed that he was sexually attracted to me and that it was somehow my fault. That's why he hated me so much. That's why he treated me like garbage. He didn't treat me like his daughter, never. 
second reason is I wasn't the person he wanted me to be. That's why he hated me so much. And last is he couldn't control me. By a certain age, I just wanted no part of him. I didn't believe anything he said. I hated him, everything he did to hurt me and my family and my mom and ruined the relationship between me and my mom because, you know, as much of everyone sees her as a good person she didn't remove us from the situation we were in and it's unforgivable for me I may have said she may have said sorry at times in my life and I may have said it's okay but constantly we were always saying he was always saying sorry 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 and I constantly just have to say it's okay it's okay and we would just move on like nothing happened all the time because that was the only way to get through those 18 years and now I just say it's not okay and I'm allowed to be angry and I don't have to forgive and people will say oh well you're hanging on to the like anything any excuse people have in the freaking world to try to deny people what they're feeling or to somehow justify or like oh you can just um you know admit your sins to the priest and then you're forgiven like all this freaking bullshit to take away from the victim and to pat the perpetrator or the abuser on the back I'm just here to say like no Like just for people to say oh well you're hanging on to it and you're you know you'd live a l better life if you just forgive yeah I'm sure the abusers would love if everyone just forgave wouldn't they so they don't actually have to feel any shame or guilt or take accountability take action make change no we should just all forgive immediately like, I've still done a lot of amazing things with my life and still have held on to this and it's okay. I don't need to forgive. I don't need to do anything anyone tells me. I'll do it when I'm ready, if ever. Okay, so, um, you know, I've talked about this before, but there was a time when I was really young, I actually tried to commit suicide and then I either right before I did or afterwards is when I told my mom that I needed help and I didn't tell her what I did I just said I wanted to get help and that day that I did that she threw what happened to him in my face like the same the day I'm crying for help asking for help she says well when he was a child he was raped like here I am suffering so immensely, feeling so horrible, and then I have to completely wipe it from my mind and cry and feel bad for. <sighs> like I had to take something that I was experiencing, and any time I showed any sort of emotion or how I was feeling, it was always stomped on immediately. Like, so even the time where I told my mom I want to commit suicide, she said, well, this happened to him. So here I am crying, feeling bad for him. For And I took that into life, like, thinking, well, he is a lot of things, but at least he didn't do that to me. Well, it turns out he may have and did do a lot of in inappropriate things. That is sexual abuse, sexual harassment. Oh, and I forgot to mention another key factor is that our family was very body positive, like nudity, like exposing us to nudity. They would just be naked all the time, my mom and dad, to try to, it was like, 
my mom would say, oh, we are trying to teach you to love your bodies. Oh, you're trying to teach me to love my body when you're constantly fat shaming me every chance you get, even though you're overweight. He was overweight until he became so skinny from being diabetic where he couldn't keep the weight on. But you're trying to teach me to love my body when you just abuse me every single day and put me down every chance you can. That's a load of crap. It was grooming. It was exposing us. There'd be times where I'd invite friends over and I'd have to run into the house and make sure that he wasn't freaking naked before coming in. And I was just a kid and I didn't know better. I should have just never invited a single soul over. But thank God I had my friends and my, my friends to basically live at their homes as often as I could. And at the time, I didn't know that's what I was doing. But I just wanted to spend time with my friends and I wanted to spend as little time as possible at home. But, yeah, so there's nudity on top of everything. Like, oh, if someone's nude in front of you, oh, you could just look them in the eyes and not look at their body. Well, or look away. Well, if it's every single day, like if a fucking Sasquatch is walking in front of your face, you're going to look. And so, what? like, one of the reasons why I just think, Obviously, this has been damaging in so many ways, but one of the main reasons is, like, I have a huge problem in intimate relationships. And for the first, pretty much, probably 75% of every sexual encounter I've ever had, even in relationships, I was under the influence because I could not... <sighs> it's due to the abuse, it's due to the exposure... At this age, I kind of just feel like I'm even asexual, like I have no desire whatsoever and I probably could live happily the rest of my life without having any sort of sexual encounter. I just, um, especially as all of this has come back to me as, as I'm talking about it, it like, you know, I I really have to be so forceful with myself to have any sort of confidence in myself and to be, to like continue on in life and not revert back to those old feelings of like not wanting to be here anymore. But thankfully, that's one thing he's never going to get from me is I'm meant to be on this planet and I'm not ever going to kill myself. So, you know, with the nudity, um, it was like exposing us, but then also when we were younger or when I was too young to know better, um, we were exposed to others who could have been predators. <sighs> Honestly, in like a really weird, twisted way, like when you're sharing your deepest, darkest secrets with the world, or even if it's going to be a small audience, like it's very disturbing and harmful in some ways to relive the memories. But in some ways, it's like I already feel better with it just being out of me. Because like, even when explaining sometimes the abuse and not in full depth, but the regular abuse and then sexual abuse um I kind of just always got the feeling that like what I had gone through wasn't as significant as what a lot of people get go through and I do understand that I know people go through worse but that doesn't help me to doesn't help me as a person to feel judged because I wasn't forced to perform like you know what I mean? Comparing is like one of the worst things we do as humans. When we compare ourselves to other, but when you compare suffering to other suffering, that doesn't help the world. So, um, I just want to end my video by saying, Please listen to your child. If your child is telling you something is wrong, they're telling you that they don't like a certain person or 
they don't feel safe, they don't feel comfortable, and you're saying, well, you have to spend one-on-one -on -one time with this person. They're your tutor, or they're, they're, they're your um, instructor, or they're your athletic support, or just whatever it is. Like, we have already seen all these documentaries and heard about it time and time again about how all these predators access children. If your child is saying, and you know, if you're saying, well, there's no other options, this is the only judo instructor, you just have to listen to your child and you have to remove them from the situations that are uncomfortable. Because otherwise, they might grow up one day resenting you and not want to have anything to do with you. So what's the point in bringing children to the world if they don't want anything to do with you? when you get to a certain age because they have all this resentment and build up of what they experienced as children, vulnerable children. And thank God for, you know, they're good parents of the world who are there for their kids and they listen to them and they are like pit bulls and they'll just do anything and everything to protect their children. But um, uh, on the other hand, you do have to, you do, like, kids do need discipline and they do need to be told, like, when their own actions are wrong. So, it's kind of like this fine line, one, ver one versus the other. Because I see at a very young age, parents not teaching their kids basic manners and understanding and respect for themselves and others. But... On this hand, I'm talking solely just based on what parents can do to protect their children. And I give a lot of thanks to those parents that are, uh, that are there for their kids the way they should. So there's other signs, of course. Um, you'd have to do your own research. There's a lot more signs than anything I could tell you just from memory, but if they're becoming closed off, they're becoming isolated, um, you know, talk to them about the threats, the re like what people will say, well, if you don't do so-and-so with me, then I'm going to do so-and-so like, so kind of like blackmailing them or threatening, um, Talk to your kids about that. Um, tell them that no matter what anyone says to them, you can always tell them. And you know, I understand cycles of abuse, and I understand that when this happens to children, they may grow up to become predators themselves, but the thing is, it's not an excuse. You have to be able to recognize your patterns and be able to willing to get help for it before you harm someone else. And even if you're not actively harming children, but you're going online and looking up things out of curiosity or you're part of, you know, paying for Like, you know that's not right, and I hope that if there's any predators watching my video to please go get help before it's too late, before you ruin more lives or before you ruin your own life, ending up in jail. And yeah, it's a pretty sad world where um, people can buy their way out of what they've done to people or they spend less time and you know, just get a little slaps on the wrist here and there because children can't remember like specific details about everything. If you look it up, very few children will fully lie about something that has happened to them. It's very rare. So please believe the children and Ah, oh. thank you for watching my video. I know that um, a lot of my videos are extremely depressing. It's like the worst subject out there in, on planet Earth is child sexual abuse. 
but part of the reason things continue on and on and on is because we don't talk about it and I hope that um, I hope you know like sadly it's probably never going to end but we can hopefully make it better somehow so yeah like usual I don't know how to end my video it's very hard to um, especially with this one um, but yeah please um, protect your children listen to your children and you know body language and everything and um, if something doesn't feel right to you as a parent, trust your instincts. Even if you're wrong, well, there's a chance you could be right and you um, are saving yourself, your child from having to relive experiences for the rest of their life. Because, you know, there's times where, um, I've mentioned before like with my triggers it's like it could be literally the happiest day of your life and something just flips like the snap of a finger and it can just take you back into a moment and I think that no matter what like you can maybe learn to it's like something completely uncontrollable and you can learn to kind of brush past it and move on but it's still like a physical effect and sometimes we get locked in these thought patterns and it's like a plays on a loop and I wouldn't like wish it on anyone it's like really horrible but I just think we can all be doing a lot better for children and children are our future so we do need to um show them the respect they deserve and protect them <sighs> thank you for watching my video um and we'll see you again soon